right, so we had quite a few uh, answers put down this week. We had B. I just had a lot of Bs this week. And wasn't that what we were doing last week, too? We are having that same thing. You know, a lot of people putting B. I don't know if it's the right answer. We're going to check it out. Let's hit it. All right, so we have Annie is being discharged home from the inpatient setting following a fracture of her right pelvis. She is having difficulty prepare, uh, propelling her new wheelchair and is unable to travel more than 30 feet before becoming fatigued. Now, the therapist realizes that the patient's severe obesity is impacting her wheelchair mobility. Which of the following wheelchair adjustments would best improve the patient's mobility? So we have A, move the front casters back. B, move the rear axle forward. C, move the rear axle back. And D, allow the patient to use a lower extremity to assist with propulsion. All right. So let's, let's go ahead and check this out. We see that in the beginning, you know, Annie's being discharged from the, from, um, discharged home from the inpatient setting following a fracture of right pelvis. Okay. All that makes sense. We don't have to do a lot of stuff there. All right. As we continue to move down, the question says she is having difficulty propelling her new wheelchair and is unable to travel more than 30 feet before becoming fatigued. All right. So she's having difficulty propelling the wheelchair. We got to think about what is involved with propelling the wheelchair. Okay. Obviously that's endurance, but what's all involved in that? What can make it difficult for somebody to propel a wheelchair? All right, so you got to start thinking about that. Like maybe it's where the wheels are placed. Are the wheels too wide? Are they too far forward or too far back? You know, those are all things that you want to be thinking about right now, especially as we move into the next part of the, uh, the question here. It says the therapist realizes that the patient's severe obesity is impacting her wheelchair mobility. All right, so that makes a lot of sense. You know, we have this patient with severe obesity. We know that's, you know, severe obesity is typically classified at least above uh, 35 on the BMI scale, right? That really doesn't make a difference here. We know that the person is overweight. We know the person's obese. And so the weight, the person's weight is affecting the wheelchair mobility. So that gives us a little bit of insight into what we're going to need to do as a physical therapist in this situation. All right. So it says, which of the following wheelchair adjustments would best improve the patient's mobility. All right, so let's crush this one. As we look down at these answer choices, we see a bunch of stuff moving back and forward. And, you know, really, before we get down into the answer choices and we start to dissect these, we have to understand, okay, what does it matter that our patient is severely obese? What does that matter for us? What does that change? And so what we need to know is, okay, this question's really asking me, what's the difference between a standard wheelchair and a bariatric wheelchair? So bariatric wheelchairs, we know that those are for patients who weigh more than 250 pounds. They typically are wider, more sturdy, uh, more durable, and they tend to have different placements of the axle. All right. And so that's what you need to know in order to get this question right. So let's look at A. A says, move the front casters back. All right. So, you know, some of you all who looked at this question, looked at this answer choice, you might have thought, okay, well, you know, I wouldn't want to move those back or forward or, you know, any type of direction necessarily. Uh, just because of like the, the patient's weight, like it would slow the patient down or speed the patient up or whatever. Like you started automatically thinking, okay, well, how is this going to improve the patient's mobility as far as the person's speed or something? That's maybe where your mindset went. But here's the deal with stuff like this. You got to kind of take it a step back and think about what is the purpose of the front casters? Why do we have those? We have the front casters there for steering actually. All right. We have them there for steering. We also have them there for stability. So those are major reasons why we have the front casters there. And so, 
you know, and a lot of you who have seen those front casters before, you know, sometimes they'll swivel. Sometimes they don't, but a lot of times they have the swivel and that's in order to direct the wheelchair. That's not helping with our propulsion at all or anything like that. So let's make that known now. So it says to move the front casters back. Well, already I'm like, well, how's that going to help with the patient's mobility to make it better, to make the endurance better? Not really. If anything, bringing those front casters back over the person, over, over the weight of the wheelchair is actually going to make it more difficult for those casters to do their work. And it's going to make the wheelchair less stable. So that's already things that I just wouldn't want to do. But it's also not addressing what the question's asking me to address. Does that make sense to y'all? Am I making sense? So A, I don't like it. All right, let's go ahead and rule that one out. B is next. B says, move the rear axle forward. Interesting. So you have to have, you have to have some knowledge about this one. And I've seen a lot of y'all putting in some really good information down there, giving me a really solid rationale, which I love to see. But let's go through this. So here's the deal. We have a patient who is severely obese. So think to yourself, when a person is obese, you know, where does a lot of their adipose tissue develop? Where, when they have excessive adipose tissue, where does that develop? All right, you may say, oh, well, it, it develops around the abdomen, right? Um, a lot of it develops in the lateral thighs, in the gluteal region. That's where a lot of excessive adipose tissue develops. All right, so what does that mean for us, though? Well, that means that we have to look at the center of mass of our patient. That is super important to answer this question. Because if you have all that adipose tissue that's developing in the, in the uh, uh, gluteal region, more junk in the trunk is what I'm talking about, right? So if you have all that, all that adipose tissue that's developing back there, what's happening? It's shifting the person's center of mass forward in the wheelchair. The person's center of mass is sitting more forward. So what does that really mean for our wheelchair? Well, that means that it's a lot harder for the person to propel it. If the wheels are all the way back, if the rear axle is pushed all the way back, it's kind of like the person's not only just propelling themselves, but it's actually like they're, they have to do more work to actually push themselves forward because their center of mass is so far forward. So it's like doing double the work when that rear axle is pushed back. I don't like that. But pushing the rear axle forward allows you to bring the center of mass back towards the rear axle. All right, so you're bringing the center of mass and the rear axle closer to each other, making it easier for the person to propel it. So that's one reason why I love B. The other reason why I like B is the fact that when you bring those wheels closer to the person's arms, it allows them to be able to propel a lot easier. It gives them a greater stroke length. I think I've, I saw that down in the, in the comments somewhere. It, it's giving them an optimal length tension relationship for their musculature when they're going to propel themselves. So what does that do? Improve you know, muscle force, muscle activation, right? It also is going to improve their ability to get a lot further in distance with a lot less effort. What am I talking about? I'm talking about endurance. It's going to improve their endurance, baby. I love B. B is a great answer. Doesn't mean B is the right answer, but I like B right now. Y'all feel me? All right. So let's hit C. C says rear axle back. So moving the rear axle back. Well, we just kind of spoke about that, right? Y'all feel me with, with C, why C is not the right answer? We said if we push that rear axle back, that it's not just going to be difficult for the patient, but now uh, just imagine you're sitting in a wheelchair, your, your body's pushed forward because you got all the adipose tissue, all the extra adipose tissue that's behind you. So that means that your shoulders are sitting more forward and now you got to reach all the way back to get those wheels and propel yourself forward. It's going to take a lot of, a lot more muscle energy. You have to displace more. And so that's going to cause more energy loss. It's going to cost you more. 
All right, so C is not a really good answer. It definitely doesn't trump B. B is our best right now. Let's look at D, though, baby. Oh, I like this one from last week. Y'all are going to see why. D says, allow the patient to use a lower extremity to assist with propulsion. Why don't I like this answer? Y'all tell me. Why don't I like D? I don't like D. I don't like D because in the question, it's not asking for that. And I think a lot of you caught on from last time as well that you have to answer what the question is asking. The question's asking for the wheelchair adjustment. All right, it's asking for a wheelchair adjustment. It's not asking you about what technique to uh, t teach the patient to do in order to assist with propulsion. It doesn't ask you about a technique. It wants you to adjust the wheelchair and D does not do that. D is obviously not the best answer here. B, as in boy, trumps all. The answer is B, baby. Congratulations to every single one of you who got this question correct. There's a lot of y'all. Y'all went all in on this one and got it correct. So congratulations to every single one of you. If you didn't get this answer uh, correct or you didn't get this question correct, you know, more than likely... You, you may have been confused about, okay, well, do I, I know something's going on with the rear axle. Maybe I've seen that in therapy ed, or maybe I've seen that around before, but I don't know which way it goes. I don't know if I should go forward or back. You'll see that in order for you to answer these types of questions, you have to have that deeper understanding of what am I doing? What's moving the axle forward? What's moving it back? That's super important to do.